But when you look at the, the cost question, I want to put this to you because this is one of the fundamental arguments Peter Dutton is making, is that, say, if you look at something like the Illawarra Wind Farm, it's, that in itself is going to cost billions. I think the figure out there is about $10 billion, But its lifespan is up to 30 years for, for wind turbines. A nuclear power facility is up to 100 years. So the cost comparison needs to factor in the lifespan of the assets as well. What do you, what do you say to that? Kieran, Kieran, this is a mob that when they were in government couldn't build a commuter car park but say that government, government, the federal government, that has no experience whatsoever in building government-owned uh, energy assets, energy assets... Uh, historically were owned by state governments and coalition governments were quite happy to flog them off uh, when, when uh, they found it convenient. Now you would have us believe that a mob who'd struggled to assemble an IKEA flat pack are going to start from scratch and be able to develop a nuclear energy industry in Australia, even though they can't say what form the nuclear reactors will take. Uh, last night, I saw uh, their energy shadow minister struggling to concede the fact that these small modular reactors they speak about don't exist anywhere in the world right now, don't exist. But they're going to be, uh, from scratch, ahead of uh, the entire curve. That's why the okay. International Energy Agency have said it's not appropriate for Australia. What we know is that the cheapest form of new energy is renewables and what we know as well is that the business community have said we want certainty. That's what we've done. A 43% legislated target. A net zero by 2050. Legislated target in place. The capacity investment scheme encouraging investment. The safeguard mechanism to drive that business certainty with the trajectory so that we reach net zero. That's why there's no business leaders uh, coming out and saying they support this. In terms of the energy sector, where are they saying, yeah, we want to, we want to pitch in and build these nuclear reactors? And that's why Peter Dutton has had to take the remarkable step for a coalition government of having a command-style economy approach and building these nuclear reactors from scratch decades into the future, the most costly form of energy. And guess what? Guess what? Taxpayers will foot the bill for Peter Dutton's nuclear fantasy. Well, given, given those numbers and the, the facts as you see it, would you urge your colleagues, and I, and I point to one of your front benches who tweeted an image of Blinky Bill with three eyes and Jacinda Allen tweeted uh, three-eyed fish today. You know, would you tell them to steer clear of some of that stuff and focus on the facts? But I'll ask you that in the context of if that's the sort of scare campaign they're going to run, what about the submariners on the AUKUS submarines and, and what would you say to our AUKUS allies about our ability to manage nuclear waste? It's a serious issue, isn't it? So would you urge your colleagues to steer clear of some of that we're, we're not going to take lectures, Karen. We're not going to take lectures from the coalition uh, that are out there uh, running scare campaigns about everything. Every issue is an opportunity for them to steer away from the facts. Look, th this is an announcement without any detail. I, I, I cannot recall a serious uh, government or alternative government coming out with a policy... Uh, such as this, with not a single costing, with just a media release, which is more than Peter Dutton's budget reply had, which had no media releases, no costings. This is a mob that have not produced a costing for policies in the more than two years now with three budget replies from Peter Dutton. When I was the leader of the Labor Party and leader of the opposition, I produced fully costed policies in areas like childcare, in rewiring the nation, in the National Reconstruction Fund, in a whole range of areas. I put them forward uh, with substance. This mob uh, think they can just get through 
by running, remember where, where, where this has been driven by as well, this is a scare campaign worried about a solar panel uh, scaring people is what they have tried. And six of the seven sites have said they don't want a bar of this. In Port Augusta, uh, the, the site that they have so-called identified, this is how hopeless they've been, has already uh, been taken up with other activity that is creating jobs. And I saw the local member there say, oh, well, we'll put it somewhere near there and somehow connect it up uh, with, the, with, the, with the grid. Uh, Liddell is... So I've been up at Liddell. What Liddell have done is sign uh, deals with Sundrive. They're going to be doing a range of activities there, including manufacturing uh, the world's most efficient solar panels okay. there on the Liddell site, employing more but those people, communities... more people than yeah. were employed under the former when the, the coal-fired station, power station, that they said they would keep open into the never-never, that shut They're polling, uh, years though. ago uh, on yeah. their watch. Their polling of those communities uh, suggests that it's upwards of oh, have 50%. Have you seen it, Kieran? The support have in those communities. Have you seen it, Kieran? Have you seen it? <laughs> have you seen it? We haven't seen it yet. I've been, I've been advised of it. Exactly. Exactly. You take it. Oh, you've been <laughs> advised. You've been advised. Oh, you well, take it with a grain of salt. Must be true then. Uh, seriously. Seriously. What a joke. Uh, they're out there, uh, you know, talking about a half-baked plan. There are no costs. The reason why there are no costings out there is because it is so expensive, because it doesn't add up. That's why they're trying to hide it, just as Peter Dutton has said, we'll tell you what we're going to do on 2030 after the election. And I'll make this tip, Karen. Uh, there's a reason why people hide costings, and that's because those costings would completely rule out any rational person going down this nuclear road. What we have here right. is, is a, a bloke who's incapable of leading his party in any serious ways, who just uh, agrees to whatever uh, the, uh, some of the extreme people in, in his show who want to, as David Littleproud has said really explicitly, they want to wind back uh, renewables. It, it's not clear uh, what they're saying. I noticed in uh, the person you were speaking to beforehand saying, oh, they've announced uh, this policy and they'll announce their gas policy and their renewables policy down the road. Well, we have all of our policy out there. It's one energy policy. It's coherent. It has the support of the business community and it's driving investment. There are more than 50 renewable energy projects uh, underway that have been approved, uh, we've seen a 25% uh, increase already uh, in heading towards our, our target, which is there. We've seen more than 300,000 Australians in the last couple of years put solar panels on their roofs. The reason why they've done that is because it makes economic sense uh, okay. to drive down costs and just as it makes sense for households, it makes sense for our entire economy as well.